thank you, loving Jesus, and we praise you. We so worship you tonight. We magnify you. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. God, thank you for the freedom you've given to us. And now, Lord, receive our praise and receive our thanksgiving. In the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this evening. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on a Thursday night. Amen. Amen. And our God is a good God, worthy of all of our praise and all of our adoration. At this time, Brother Ron's coming to help us to receive our Thursday evening tithe and all offering. All Christians pay tithe. Amen. Amen. As commanded by the word of the Lord, you give. God will bless you. Let's receive a good offering as unto the Lord. We can give at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks or dollar sign NTCC Junction City on Cash App. But most of all, let's receive a good offering for the Lord tonight. Amen. Brother Ron, sir, please pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for your giving, and God bless you for it this evening. God will bless you as you give to him. Pray for the guys that are gone on leave, those that are traveling. A lot of guys on leave, the guys that are coming back from Europe, so continue to pray for them. It's good to see Ashton once again in service tonight. Amen. You get ready to go on leave too, right? Praise the Lord. Have a good time. I'd like to read to you from two passages this evening. First one is found in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And also from Romans chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And I'd like to preach tonight for just a little while on the title of a message, Looking at Jesus Instead of Others. Looking at Jesus Instead of Others. Reverend Myers, sir, would you please pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, to hear your word. I pray, God, that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds to all that you have for us tonight. Speak to us, God. Help Pastor as he preaches, God, give him words to speak in a fresh unction of your spirit tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're here in this service tonight to worship the one that has so graciously saved us and delivered us from sin. How many are thankful for that tonight, right? Yeah. And I have come tonight to talk about Jesus and how that we, as the children of God, are to look to him. Now, when we talk about looking, we are talking about our eyes being used, correct? And believe it or not, what we see affects our life. And as Christians, unless you learn better, your life will be influenced by what you see in church, in your family, and each other. I understand that, that we do not live unto ourselves. And that we, as 
Christians, we should be the example and we should set forth the right kind of testimony. Praise God. And we do what we do. And we have the right testimony, not because somebody forces us to do this, not because the church makes you do that, but because we love Jesus. Praise God. But we do not base our devotion and servitude to God upon somebody else's life. What am I saying by that? We base our devotion to God, for God, because we love God. Now, whether or not you want to live for God, I need to be sure that I am right with God. Amen? Regardless what anybody else does, you have to make up in your mind, make up in your heart, that I am going to live for God. Whether your friends, if your friends don't want to live for God, That's their loss. I need to live for God. If your family doesn't want to live for God, well, bless your heart, I need to live for God. Not because I'm forced to, but because I love the Lord. How many love God this evening? We base our devotion to God because of our love for Him. It grieves my heart sometimes as a pastor that I get asked questions about why it seems like others in the church do not care about the things of God. And I get asked this question because the one asking is discouraged. Maybe they're downcast because their brother and sister who knows better, who knows what God requires, who knows what is right and wrong and does not do anything about it. You know what? We have all come short of the glory of God. Can I get a witness? And they wonder what is going on. My response to them is, regardless of what somebody else does, Pray for them, and we need to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for them, that God will strengthen them, that God will help them. But most of all, take care of yourself and keep your eyes upon Jesus. Unfortunately, not really unfortunately, excuse me. You know, that. well, really unfortunately, sometimes people don't want to do right. And they don't want to live right. But you know what? If, If you don't want to live right, I've got to live right. And that's the attitude that we have to have. Amen? And ultimately, the bottom line is our own personal relationship with the Lord. How are things between you and God right now? That's really what matters, correct? I've even said that, you know, sometimes even I get discouraged when born again, Holy Ghost filled Christians do not take living for God seriously. You know what? This is not a game. This is for real. We are talking about your eternal soul. You mean to tell me that I'm going to sell my soul for my friends in the barracks? I'm going to sell my soul for the beggarly elements of this life? Jesus must be number one. And we need to be like David and we need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And we have to keep looking unto Jesus even when things are going wrong. Can I get a witness? And so Christ is the answer. He's the one that has saved us. He's the one that has delivered us. He's the one that has saved our soul from death. He's the one that saved us from destruction. He is our Savior. I read to you tonight from the book of Romans chapter 14. Verses 11 and 12 at the beginning of the service. Let me read it to you again. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us, talking about us, shall give an account of himself to God. So what does that mean? That we are going to stand before God and give an account of our actions or lack of actions. Whatever the case may be, you don't have to answer to me. You have to answer to God. I have to answer to God. Every one of us has to give an account of ourselves. And a a person may, may not take living for God seriously in this life, but the time will come. You may not bow now. A person may not bow now. But the time will come when they will bow and they will confess to God and they will give an account of their life before the Lord. So my my mind is, wait a minute, I'm going to accept Jesus now. I'm going to let Jesus be real now. I'm going to bow now. I'm going to humble myself to God now. I'm going to live for God now before it is too late. I'd rather bow now and give God the glory now. Give Him the honor that's due to Him now because guess what? We're going to end up doing it anyway. Anyway, I'm glad 
that Jesus has come into my life. And, and we have to understand this. And I want you to know that you can have Jesus in your life as well. But yet you find those that have no room. They have no time for Christ. And, and that's a sad thing. I'm busy, and I understand we all get busy. We all have things going on in our life. But you know what? We have to make Jesus a priority. I know you've heard this over and over and over. I preached three nights, four nights, whatever, three nights last week about putting Christ first. We need to make time for Jesus. And there are those that make no time. If there's nothing else going on, then they squeeze Jesus in. They try to make room for God. That's not the way it's supposed to be. On the flip side of that, you find those that say, wait a minute. I'm going to do my best to make room for my God in my life. I realize that Jesus died for me. I realize that he went to hell for me. I realize that he paid the price for my sin. I realize that, that he did all these things for me. He is my Savior. I am going to make room for Jesus. I'm going to put God first in my life. For too long I looked at all these other things. But now, wait a minute. I don't care if all my friends get mad at me. I am going to live for God. Christ is still the answer. He's the answer. For what's missing, always, that's a fact, for what's missing in the lives of men and women. I didn't find what I needed in my life from some other person. We had to look to Christ. And, and people look, they, they look for love, and that old country western song says, looking for love in all the wrong places, right? And that's what the world is doing. They're looking for love, and they're looking for acceptance, and, and they're looking for these things out there in the world. Uh, my friend, the answer is not out there in the world. The answer is found in Jesus Christ. Amen? And we need to share this with all the people that we can. And I want them to know that in this world uh, that is so driven uh, for us to look at others uh, and to look what they have and what they have accomplished in order to be happy, I want them to know that when we look to Jesus uh, and we accept him as our Savior, that we can have exactly what we need. Can someone say amen to that? Again, I'm going to say that Christ is the answer for the world that we're living in. People are looking to people to satisfy the longing in their souls. I'm going to tell you right now, people will let you down. So, well, that's just a horrible thing, but how many times have we let somebody down? All right, so I, I'm being very careful in these statements because uh, we all can't throw any stones. Because we have let people down, have we not? And people will let you down. And people are looking to other people to satisfy the longing in their souls. But listen, listen. We have to be careful who we follow and who we pattern our life after. We are so, we are, are in a society that whether you acknowledge it or not, we do look to others. And we want that acceptance. But listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14. He said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. We have to be careful who we follow, right? And so we look to others. And, and yes, there are those that you look to examples, but who are we to really look to? We need to look to Jesus. Now, we think this is a no-brainer, but we need to be reminded of this. Uh, and we think, well, of course, Pastor, we're supposed to look to Jesus. But then why do we get our eyes on the wrong things? He left us. Christ left us the example that we are to follow. We are to follow his example. I understand that there are those that we look to that set the right example of a Christian life. And it's not wrong to do that. And there are those that are wonderful examples to follow in regards to fulfilling Christian responsibilities. There are Christian responsibilities in case you didn't know. Amen? We do have responsibilities as Christians. Now, we are saved and we're kept by grace. How many are thankful for the grace of God, right? Yeah. And we are saved by the grace of God and the mercy of God. And, and we're, not, we're not saved by our works. The Bible says, lest any man should boast. But we are saved by grace. But guess what? There are responsibilities that God the Father expects us to adhere to. We have responsibilities. I preached about it last week. And, and wouldn't it be a shame 
Think about this. Wouldn't it be a shame if you were the cause of someone to lose out with God? Or maybe you're the cause that they didn't even come to God in the first place. Now, we have a responsibility to live right. God wants us to live right. And if we're not living right in front of our friends, your friends are going to think that when you talk about God, it's fake and it's phony and it's not real. But when we are really saved by God and we're doing what God wants us to do, it's not fake, it's not phony, but it is real. Our God is real and our God is able to do wonderful things in our life. And we need to show our friends that God is a reality in our life. And you might be the reason either they come to God or they don't come to God. You know what? What a shame that it would be that we stand before God giving an account of our life and our friend is over there saying why why didn't you tell me as God is saying to them depart from me you worker of iniquity for I never knew you I don't want to be a cause of that I want people to know the love of God I want them to know the mercy of God I want them to experience the grace of God and guess what God help me help me God to do the right things we love our families. We love our friends. And I don't want them to die and go to hell. All because I'm looking at the wrong things. Every one of us need to be sure that we are focused upon the right things. What about being the cause of someone not fulfilling their Christian responsibilities? Because you did not fulfill your Christian responsibilities. And so it's a vicious circle. We have to do the right things. What about being the cause for someone to go astray and they begin to live in an evil way because we didn't keep our eyes upon Jesus? Now, not, not everybody's a hypocrite. Amen? Amen? Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 10, Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. Now, if we cause someone to go astray to do an evil thing, we ourselves are in danger of falling into the pit, losing our own soul. But the upright, the one that is walking uprightly before God, God's going to bless them and God's going to be good to them. Amen? And it, it is food for thought and it's time that we look to Jesus and be sure that we are doing the right thing, fulfilling what God wants in our life. I understand that people use other people to excuse the way they live. Well, I am not doing this because they, yada, 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 yada. I will not live for God because this this, 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 and this, and this, right? But really, that's no excuse at all. So are we going to stand before God and say, well, God, because uh, this person did this, I, I didn't do that. Or, or because they didn't do that, I didn't do that. How are we going to tell that to God? The responsibility lies with us. To do the right thing. To, the, to do those things that are pleasing to God, regardless of somebody else. Pastor, how, do, how, how can I live a victorious life for Jesus? We need to look to him. We need to follow him because Jesus is the answer. He's the one, the only one, that can meet all the needs in our heart and our life. No Christian can be spiritual, powerful, and growing unless Jesus is the focal point of their life. I appreciate the fellowship. I enjoy the fellowship of the saints. And I have a good time and we, and we have fun and various things. But there's more to living for God than that. There's more to it than grabbing a pizza after church. That's all well and good. But there's more to it. We need to be spiritual and we need to be powerful and we need to be growing. And it'll never happen until Jesus is part of your life. It's time to put Jesus in a priority position, correct? We all, I'm going to say right now that we all need the help of the Lord. And, and we look at it and we say, oh my goodness, God, I've come up short. God, I, I really, there's just no hope. I'm so far gone. Wait a minute. 
wait a minute. We're not going to give up. We're going to have a fresh start. We're going to have a renewal, and we all need the help of the Lord. And too many times, Christians included, we look to everything except Jesus. Now, we say that we're Christians, right? That's good. There's nothing wrong with that if we're a Christian. We say that we love God, and we say that we put God first, but we get so distracted at everything going around about us that we begin to look at these things rather than looking at God. And this is especially true for Christians who have been around God for years. We learn how to say amen. We learn how to raise our hands. We learn how to act. We learn how to have that spiritual faraway look in our eyes. And I'm, that's all well and good in the right place. I'm not trying to tell you to stop saying amen. But what happens is we learn what to do. All right? So we're no better off than those that are, are part of churches that have a lot of form and rituals. Because we know when to say amen. We know when to raise our hands. We know when to stand up, sit down, turn around, whatever the case may be. But wait a minute. Let it be real. And then when we raise our hands to God, it's genuine. And it's real. Because we want to praise our God. Or we want to worship Him. And we just say, well, wait a minute. I don't, I don't want to just go through the motions. I want it to be real. I don't want to have mechanical Christianity. But I want a spiritual Christianity. And the only way to do that is by looking unto Jesus. And so as we live for God, life happens. And sometimes life is not so good. Oh, I'm sorry. All your perfect lives and the roses smell good every day, right? Well, sometimes there's some fertilizer on them roses that don't smell so good. What kind of fertilizer? You know. So what happens is life gets hard and things happen and situations happen. And we get callous towards the things of God. My exhortation is do not become calloused to the things of God. Do not become complacent in your life for God. And do not take the truth of God for granted. Do not make the fatal mistake that so many people have made. What's that? They have failed to realize the essential place that sound doctrine, sound teaching plays in their Christian walk with God. We need to learn the Word of God. We need that doctrine, the teaching of Christ in our life. That's why we have church. That's why we have Bible study. That's why you ask questions. That's why you want to learn. And, and I know some people never have any questions. I wonder if they even read their Bibles. There's this young man right there. He's always asking me questions. Pastor, what about this? Pastor, what about that? And sometimes he has a little mixed up, but at least he's, I know he's reading his Bible because of the questions. Right? And that's the way it ought to be. You're just curious? All right, that's awesome. Stay curious. Stay curious. Learn. We need this sound teaching in our hearts. And, and, and uh, I've been reading it and teaching it for years, and I'm still learning. Right? Well, when will I know? Well, when we all get to heaven. Right? Amen? And what a day of rejoicing that will be. We need Jesus. We need his word. And we need him in our life. And we need to look to him for everything. You can't fight spiritual battles using fleshly weapons. You need to be spiritual and my friends, the only way to be spiritual is to look to God and hide his word in our heart. He says that we might not sin against him. And if we are ever going to maintain any level of victory in our life over sin and over the devil, you're going to have to first know and believe the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And we understand that without the gospel, there is no victory. Without the gospel, there is no hope. We need the gospel on the inside of us. So what does that mean? That means that we need to have a vital living relationship with the Lord. We need to look to Him. Without salvation through Christ, we all know that we are then enslaved by sin. Enslaved by the devil. We deserve judgment. We deserve hell. 
because of our, our rebellious nature and because of our behavior. But praise be unto God tonight that God took the initiative to provide a way for us to be forgiven, a way for us to be restored, a way for us to have fellowship with Him. Thank God for the cross of Calvary. Thank God for what Jesus has done for us. Christ, He lived a perfect life. We know this. And he died a sacrificial death upon the cross for us. Why did he do this? He did this so that you might be forgiven. He did it that I might be forgiven. So that Ron could be forgiven. That Christian could be forgiven. That Ashton, all of us, amen? That we could be forgiven. Look to Christ and we realize what Christ has done for us. In John 1.29... It said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. We need to look to Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. He is the only one that can take away our sin. And when we come up short, don't let the devil beat you down and say that you're no good and that there's no hope for you. I know that there's hope as I repent and I turn away from my sin. And I know that the blood of Jesus Christ is still flowing. And I know that there's still power in the blood. Behold, my friends, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The best news is, is that he's so graciously offering salvation to all those who will repent. Those who will believe solely upon him for a right relationship with God. Well, pastor, wait a minute. Everyone here is a Christian. Well, maybe so or maybe not. I'm not here. I'm not your judge. God is our judge. But if you are a Christian, you can look to him with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving for the salvation that we enjoy. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But if you're not a Christian tonight, it would be a good night to say, God... Just forgive me. I need you in my life. Forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. It's that easy. And let me tell you something. Christians, Christians never get tired hearing about Jesus and his atoning death upon the cross. It's nice to hear about Jesus. Amen. Like, why are you always preaching about the cross? Why are you always preaching about the blood? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Without all that, we would be dead and in hell. I don't, I don't get tired hearing about how that he died for me. I don't get tired hearing about how that he rose again on the third day. I don't get tired hearing about how that if I come to him, he can wash away my sin. He can make me clean. He can make me whole. He can restore my relationship. I don't get tired hearing about that because I realize that without him, I have nothing. I have nothing but hell to look forward to. But now, because that Jesus one day one day I'm going to walk on those streets of gold he said behold I go to prepare a place for you it's already there Amen. I don't get tired of hearing about it Christian listen to me we all have battles we all have things we go through do not become jaded in your life for Jesus we have to keep our experience fresh and when we keep it fresh, it'll be easy to look to him on a daily basis and the devil's out to destroy us. He messes with our minds. Amen? And when we keep looking to him and we keep our experience fresh, you don't have time to look at other people. Talk about looking at Jesus instead of others. You don't have time to get discouraged when others are lacking. And it's, it's so easy. You look at and you're like, what? You don't have time to get disgruntled when it feels like you're the only one who cares. And if you are the only one, praise God. Be the catalyst to make something happen. You be the spark. You be the one that makes it happen. You be the one to encourage somebody else. And God will bless you for your faithfulness. Amen. How many want to be blessed by God? Be faithful. So my words of encouragement to you in this service tonight is to keep your eyes upon Jesus instead of others. And everything will be all right. Then we can rise up and we can tell men and women that in the name of Jesus there's salvation. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In Jesus is salvation, not in the name of a church, not in the name of a preacher, not in the name of some government leader, but only, only, only in the wonderful, powerful name of Jesus Christ. We look to him. Why? Why do we look to him? Because there is only one way to make it to heaven. What did he say in John chapter 14, verse 6? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Listen. <clears throat> Come to the instruments, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you do not know the Lord in reality, know this one thing. Jesus loves you. And his grace is outstretched to you right now. If you're already a Christian and you have experienced the grace and the salvation of Jesus, it should cause you to want to lift up his mighty name. And it's time. I'm not here to get on anybody's case. I'm just here to, to remind you to keep our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the only person that can live for God for you is you. And you're the only one that can cause you to walk away from God. And tonight, why don't we just fortify in our hearts and our minds one more time that I'm going to live for God. And whatever that you have need of, look to Jesus instead of others. And as we do this, God will help us. As you bow your heads, please, and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord.